And now a word from Jennifer Miller. Thanks, Brian. Hey, guys. My debut novel, The Year of the Gadfly, is a literary mystery about a group of prep school outcasts and the secrets they're hiding. The protagonist is Iris Dupont, an aspiring journalist whose only friend in the world is the ghost of Edward R. Murrow. Take it away, Andrea. The days were already growing shorter, prodding us towards summer's end when my mother and I left Boston for the sequestered town of Nye. She hummed to the radio and I sat strapped into the passenger seat like a convict being shuttled between prisons. In the last six months, my Beacon Hill neighborhood had shrunk to the size of a single room. Dr. Patrick's office with its greasy magazines and hieroglyphic water stains. The vast landscape that opened before us now wasn't any more comforting. The mountainous peaks resembled teeth. The roads stretched between them like a black tongue. And here we were in our small vehicle speeding toward that awful mouth. From the maps and photographs I had uncovered at the Boston Public Library, I knew that Nye would be a nest of gloomy woods sunk into one of these mountains. The mountain had no name, which troubled me. Even the word Nye sounded like a negation, an absence, a place conflicted about its own existence. My mother, Ivy League MRS recipient and philanthropy board member, was unimpressed by this detail. In fact, she was as chipper as a Today Show host. Isn't it exciting, Iris? Starting high school on a new foot? You want to pl replace my biological foot with a prosthetic one? Don't give me that cliché nonsense. You mean anti-cliché nonsense, I thought, and switched the station to NPR. I tried to let the familiar voices soothe me, but every mile brought us closer to the hunching mountains, those hills overlapping like the folds of a thick curtain, hiding nigh from sight. The official reason for my family's move was professional. My father, savvy businessman, befuddled parent, was opening a Berkshire's resort for tourists who liked to experience nature while they had their leg hair singed off with lasers and their eyelashes dyed. The unofficial reason we were leaving Boston, however, was Dr. Patrick. I'd started seeing him six months ago after my mother found me arguing empathetically with the wall. Well, all she saw was the wall. But I was having a conference with my spiritual mentor, Edward R. Murrow. And yes, I knew he'd been dead for 47 years. But why should a person limit her interlocutors to the living? And because there was no what to do when your daughter talks to dead journalist chapter in the myriad self-help books my mom had been reading, she shipped me straight off to the good doctor. After rooting around inside my head for a while, Dr. Patrick decided I was in the, quote, gray area for developing depression and anxiety, unquote. Gray area was a cliche, I complained to Morrow. If Patrick was going to worry his patients with ominous diagnoses, he could at least do so with concrete nouns and verbs. Of course, the announcement of my encroaching mental collapse sent my parents into nuclear winter mode. It wasn't healthy, they fretted, for a 14-year-old to spend her time writing rough drafts of her Pulitzer Prize acceptance speech. Or to show a greater interest in nationally renowned media personalities than in boys. Or to make imaginary friends instead of real ones. I've had a difficult year, hardly breaking news to this reporter, and I needed the chance to heal. So off we went to my very own magic mountain. The vast landscape that opened up before us. Let me do it again. Because there's no up there. <laughs> I think I need to rewrite your book. <laughs> <laughs>